Hello everybody, this is Mav. Hope you guys are having a good Friday. We're going to go for a little drive. I hope everybody's having a good day. Um, personally, I am not, and I will just tell you how it is, but let me kind of park it here real quick, because I need to get my camera stay in second gear I don't like to get very personal but I'm gonna get personal in this video um, so a family friend that I've known since I was a kid has physically sat there and told me to go and just basically run off and die. Um, I will just tell you plain out and straight because I don't really care. <sighs> but apparently, a few days ago, I'm just going to put it in six gear. I was talking with this person and they suggested for me to go and do this street ministry thing which would probably be with their church group. Now I'm already with a group called Christ Seekers and my friend is a minister and he's a great minister and I'm about to sound like Trump when I say this but he's a fantastic he's a great minister very man he's fantastic he's one of the best but in, <laughs> in reality this dude's the best guy that you'll ever have as a friend and amazingly enough he's younger than me I'm 25 years old and he's younger than me and he's a minister and he's kind of a person that I look up to to try to better myself for other people well, when this person suggested, okay, keep in mind, suggested that I should go and do this um, thing. Oh, hit the grass. And a good thing to know where the car is going. But suggested I go and do this thing I told her I respectfully decline I am currently with a group that does ministering we go out and witness like we we do the whole shebang well if I were to tell you that and that a bomb went off in this lady's house I would not be lying she jumped my case cussed me out and basically tried to act like she was my parent. Now, another personal note, ladies and gentlemen, my mother passed away in 2018 on her 60th birthday. Died in my arms of a heart attack by saying, I love you to me. Her last words. And then my father has recently just passed away this year in February. So I am 25 years old without any parents. And in reality, my childhood wasn't really the fondest, or the best, or even the greatest. Well, this woman, for some odd reason, had taken the ownership. I won't park right here, real quick. Uh, park it. 
Uh, surprisingly, and basically, has just took in a complete ownership of trying to be a parent to me. To the point to where when I went and, and dog sat at her house. Ooh. See, this is what happens when you're used to regular driving. Ooh. I think I should have done it the other way around. Because now I'm driving on the wrong side of the road. <sighs> but she sat there, and when I got back to her house after work. She sat there and had a list of things she wanted me to do. And at the bottom of it, she put mom. Creeped me out a bit. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Listen, folks. I love her. Love her to death. I mean, she was my mom's best friend. And I've known her since I was in diapers. But... There's just no reason for you to be sitting there and saying what you said to me. And <clears throat> I told her I respectfully declined. And she basically just went off and got mad that I wouldn't go and do this thing. Even though, currently, I already do stuff for my church. I got into a heated discussion. I basically just said, you know what? I ha I've had it. I'm done. And I'm just going to put it as it is and tell her like it is. Because I'm a nice guy. But even nice guys will get very old of what you are trying to do. Uh, finally. And I just told her like it is. I just spilled my heart out to her and told her how I felt and all this and instead of trying to understand where I was coming from and trying to talk to me to see if there was any way to talk it out I got cussed out and chewed out because I was basically telling my side and I was like whatever you know, I'm not going to really let it bother me because, you know, I know her. I know her perks and stuff. And I know how she acts because I've known her for years. But after her parents passed away, I think she completely went in psycho herself. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today this woman went absolutely crazy on me. To the point to where I'm making this video of a drive because I am very depressed. And I'm very heartbroken. And I haven't felt like this since my mother died. I felt like this when my father passed away, but it was more easier for me when my father passed away because my father didn't die near me. And my father showed signs of him passing soon. My mother just died unexpectedly. Even though my mother smoked cigarettes and you know lived that life since she was 14 years old, two packs a day and all that, you know, she got... The she got to be 60 years old and she went from being moping and groping and upset because um, she was just like, you know, my life's over. Why, why even try? Why even care to go on and stuff? To taking her oxygen machine off and walking around the house and catching her at breath and all, always happy, being playful and smiling. And I hadn't seen my mom like that in over seven years before that. My mom wasn't very happy and everything since 2011. And for two years while I was a sophomore or a junior and a senior in high school, I had to... Uh, well, there goes up my premium on my insurance. That yeah, probably already went up a couple times already. <sighs> but... Anyway, she was happy, and I was happy for her, and my steering's knocked out, I guess. Well, that's going to be a repair, and another one. Ugh. 
Don't worry, we'll go to another place. I want to get on some kind of road and drive. <laughs> but I'll find another thing to go driving on. <sighs> but yeah, my mother was happy and on the day she passed away my father and my mother got to see each other for the very first time in over 20 years and my father was there when my mom died I don't really know how to put it in words and I'm I'm really trying to hold back tears and I'm really trying to keep my emotions to myself because not only is crying kind of a weird thing to do on YouTube <laughs> Especially for, you know, me trying to be the most positive person I can be for other people. And I always try to do that. But. She took on the role of being my mom. And I don't. She says that she made a promise to my mother. And I don't remember this promise. And I don't really think my mother really wanted her to make that promise. I wonder if I went backward. Oh, well, apparently, I guess it's not doing too much. I guess I'll just do this then. But, you. Okay, in real life, I would have went up that embankment, but. <sighs> Y'all. She texted me. To, I'm just going to go straight to the point. I don't want to draw this out. I don't want to make this a long video. She texted me earlier today. And. Not to really get too much into it. Because I don't really want to deal with it. But she texted me earlier today, and she was trying to make some kind of stupid point. And she said this, just so you know, I didn't, she basically was trying to say that she didn't start loving me when I was born. She started loving me before I even came out, while I was conceived, when I was in my mother's belly, and all this other stuff. She loved me like a son, and she loved me even more when my mother died. Now I can understand my mother passing away and you being a friend of my mother's. And you know what? I'm going to switch this out with something that's actually fun to drive. Oh, you know it. And guess what? I'm not going there. I... Even though I'm a NASCAR guy, it's going to be a note for today. Let's see. Pretty long, but it's not long I want. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Alright, we'll do current date. What time is it? Three o'clock? She was basically trying to sit there and say, you know, I didn't make that promise to make me feel better. I made that promise to make her feel better. And she was trying to justify her actions and stuff. And I basically just told her straight, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to even hear from you. Because you sat there and told me, don't bother to contacting me. 
don't bother calling me or texting me if you need a babysitter for your kids when you have them. Don't bother calling me or texting me or inviting me to any special events in your life. All because I didn't want to go and do street ministry. And also, since I apparently I told, gave her my entire emotions and told her how I felt about her being that way, it pissed her off to the core, to where apparently I hurt her feelings, and I was in the wrong, and that I am a, a terrible person, I don't listen to people, I put walls up, and I'm so short-minded and all this other stuff, um, for one, that's not true. If you ask any of my friends at all, I'm the most loving and heart warmth person that you'll ever meet. I will give you the shirt on my back if it means that you can be warm. I will give you the food on my plate if it means that you can eat. I will give you the drink out of my cup if it means that you can quench your thirst. You want to know why? Because the good Lord himself, and even my mother the herself, has even taught me that thing. And not only that, I know for a fact that if I give up everything that I have to someone that needs it more than I do, the Lord will reward me in heaven with multiple different things. And it ain't riches and gold because what do you want to buy in heaven? And in reality, I wouldn't want to buy anything in heaven. What I personally would want is just my old farmhouse back. That's it. Old farmhouse back, all my dogs. That's all I want. I don't want anything else. Just want that. Now, I love everybody that I meet. But when I sit there and get told that I'm an ungrateful person, a piece of shit, and all this other stuff, I'm going to ignore you. Because I was bullied growing up. And I don't need any more bullying at all. Because that's, for one, immature within itself. And that's impolite. And that's, I mean, what, what advantage are you going to get by bullying somebody? That's what I don't get. That's what I've been trying to understand. Why, why bully somebody? Especially someone you know that's been through a traumatic experience. Well, I tell her what how I feel. I told her how it is. She told me to go fuck myself, never contact her again, and go die. So you know what? This is what I want to do right now. That's what I want to do right now. I want to get in my fucking truck. I want to put it in drive. I want to go down the hill as fast as I fucking can. And if a car comes out, I will target it just to kill myself. Just to make her fucking happy. Because she told me to go die. Because I'm a shithead. Don't think about nobody else other than myself. And apparently I'm the worst thing on the face of the earth since sliced fucking bread. And then... While I'm at work, and I'm doing my job, I get more text messages from her stating, I know why now your brothers don't like you. I know why now your brothers don't care for you. I know why this. I know why that. I know this and that and all hold. I really don't care what you think. Or how you feel about what I'm doing with my life. I personally don't care about the promise that you made to my mother to honestly make you feel better about yourself. Because my mother herself, yes, I will admit, she babied me. But then again, if you had a child that's had three heart surgeries, that has had a severe head concussion, to the first eight years of my life was spent in the hospital due to my heart and then I got a head concussion at six years old because I was playing with my dog and my dog tripped me and I fell and I got a severe head concussion to where I got three blood clots in my brain I had to relearn how to talk and I still have some speech issues to where I sound like Porky the Pig I use it as a joke but in reality it's actually really sad I have memory issues I have a temper and my temper has been controlled since 
I was a kid. But the anger part of it is one thing that I'm still working on. And I personally don't care for nobody that wishes death upon me. That, and also the term fuck you in a serious manner and not a jokey manner, is something that I take personally. Granted, I'm not supposed to. Granted, I'm not supposed to be like that either. I am supposed to be a loving person. Because I'm supposed to be a, an example of Jesus. But, I believe by me blocking this individual from calling me or texting me, as well as not responding back to their hateful speech and bulliness, is a way to not feed that negativity. And to all the people that watch my videos, I love every one of you. Because you guys decided, and gals, y'all decided to come to my, my, my channel and watch my videos. And as you can see, I'm not a content creator. I can't sit there and spend 20 minutes or so editing videos and stuff like that. I just sit there and I get on a game. If I feel like recording, I press the record button and I just let it go. No scripts, no nothing. It's just all raw footage and all raw gaming. And after I'm done, if the episode is a good one and I feel like it's a good one, I'm just going to upload it. I don't care. I got over 87 videos that I've recorded. None of them, other than a few, have been put on to my YouTube channel. Just for the simple fact that a lot of the times that I play with my friends, with YouTube's new community guidelines and also parental guidelines for their for their kids stuff, a lot of my videos have been banned or also have been deleted because they do not fit their guidelines. But my audience is not supposed to be for kids. My actual audience is supposed to be for 21 and plus year old people. That is where my videos need to be. I would really like to, for my channel to be adult content only. Because I can't control anything that my friends say in their videos. If they cuss, they cuss. That's them. Me, I cuss out of surprise. And I have really tried to slow down on my swearing. I really have tried to swear, slow down on my swearing. Believe me, it has been a long, 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 long road. Believe me. Even my friend that's a minister, we'll get into a full-blown conversation and we'll get so far into the conversation that I'll say, man, you know, this shit is bullshit, you know that? And he'll look at me and I'm like, oh, <laughs> I cussed at night. And he's like, yeah, but you're getting better. That's encouragement. This person right here did not encourage me. I am, for one, not going to to put this person's name out there. I'm not going to put any of their personal information out there. But I am going to say this. The reason why I'm in a mood to where I just don't really care no more. It's because when my mother passed away, my life went to hell. I ended up being homeless. Living in my car. Living in homeless shelters. I moved up to another state. Because on my birthday of that same year, which was even more harder because my mother used to make cakes for our birthdays every year. And if she couldn't make them or didn't have the time to make them, she'd go to the store and buy it. Didn't get a cake. The only thing I got was uh, brownies that my dad made. And my dad and my mother are really good cooks. And my mom is an absolute best baker and I have her recipes and I would most definitely be making one for banana pudding batches here probably in a little while after this whole quarantine thing ends and by the way I am praying for each and every one of my subscribers during this time of quarantine because personally I don't see it as a really big serious thing 
and this is the reason why because it shows symptoms of the common cold and the common flu and with each and every conference that I've watched or heard or even read I have just came to the conclusion that if you drink and eat enough vitamin A and vitamin C as well as taking NyQuil or DayQuil or just some kind of cold and flu medicine to basically get your body ready yes your body's going to be kind of fatiguish your body's going to be kind of sluggish and you're going to be really tired like I am right now but the thing is you have that medicine in your bloodstream you have that medicine in your system and it's going to fight it now you're going to have to follow the guidelines yes that the president has put out where you got to wash your hands keep yourself six feet away and that's all understandable that's perfectly fine but what gets to me is there's people that overreact over this coronavirus what kind of gets to me even more is is um, if you come into one of my stores you're wearing gloves you're wearing a mask and everything that's fine I'll talk to you, I'll say hi, I'll ask you if you need something, or if I can ring you out, I could, I mean, I'll, I'll do anything to help my customers. But what, what gets to me is this, you wear gloves and mask to the store, okay, let's say you grab a loaf of bread, grab that loaf of bread, you take it, put it in your cart that's been sanitized, and then you put it on the conveyor belt that's been sanitized, and then you put it in the bags that, again, have been sprayed with sanitizer. My store has went above and beyond the call of duty for sanitation. Like, they have one order of sanitized items for the store and one order for sanitized items for the customers. That way we're able to not only keep the store clean but also keep customers coming back and also give them the reassurance that you know we're trying our hardest to make sure that this epidemic doesn't get out even more we're losing money by doing this we're not gaining really much any money we're actually losing money because we are ordering two times what we usually do <sighs> but they're doing a swell job but you, you get a loaf of bread, right? Do the whole shebang and all that. Well, when you get home, you're going to put that loaf of bread down. And you're going to take your gloves off. And you're going to unwrap that bag. And you're going to pull out loaves of, of pieces of bread. So, this is where it kind of confuses me. If this virus is as sticky and as you know just all in all like the most hazardous thing to even have what's going to stop that virus from getting on your skin when you get home if you spray or wipe down any of your food with sanitary stuff you actually contaminated the food right there because you put contaminants on to the food but apparently if you don't sanitize your stuff, then you're going to contaminate yourself through the food too. So my viewpoint on it, and this is my viewpoint, I love everybody that I meet and I pray for everybody that I see. And I will always pray for other people on this virus. And I will always wish the best for everybody. And if anyone does end up getting sick from this, Lord, save them. I will pray for you. But my output on this is about me personally. If I am to obtain the virus, then I have obtained the virus. I will stay home. I will do everything that has been told to do if you obtain this virus. But my viewpoint on it is, is if I die, I die. Really, y'all, I just 
I got on here because I've, I've been depressed all day. I woke up early before I went to work. And I got that message and I tried to explain myself. And I got told to eat shit and die. And I got called every name in the book. And then when I didn't respond back, I got bullied. And I don't take bullying lightly. I don't encourage it. I don't. I just. I don't. I don't. But in a few of my videos, I will tease with my friends. And that's because we're all teasing and goofing around. But it's not teasing and goofing around if you sit there and tell someone, go fuck yourself and die. I don't know what possessed this woman to say shit like that. And excuse my language, y'all. Please excuse, but... I'm, I'm just... I'm lost for words. I really don't know what else to say. I really don't know what else to do. I'm just tired. There hasn't been really any peace in my life in the last two years since my mother has passed. And it's not that I'm dwelling on my mother's past. I had to go through an entire year of grieving and trying to get over my mother passing away and trust me it was hard to do am I over it fully no nobody really will be over it fully if you love somebody so much you're not going to be over it fully but I know that my mother wishes me well and I know my father does too And I do talk to them. And some people believe that's a weird thing to do. But you know what? I believe in ghosts. And I have stuff happen in my house. So I know either my mother or my father are sitting there trying to play games in my house. And more than likely, I think it would be my mother. Because my mother... I kind of hate this little thing that they have. But my mother... Me and her used to watch Ghost Adventures. We watched it all the time. And I even told her, if you ever come back as a ghost, please, 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 please tell me what it's like. Oh. <sighs> but yeah, y'all, I just wanted to vent. In reality, I'm just, I'm sick of it. I'm tired. I really don't want nothing to do with really anybody right now. But if y'all want to leave a comment, a positive comment, or anything, you know, I, I, I gladly will accept it. And I will read all of your comments and I will reply back to them. And I do thank y'all for this. And I am sorry if any of this material has been explicit or has been very personal or deep. But you know what? In this generation, in this world, there are a lot of people that do think more about themselves than they do about other people. And that personally needs to stop because I've seen people kill themselves over it. I have seen it destroy families. I have seen it destroy friendships. And it's just... Y'all, love each other. Love each other like yourself, and love God as a God. And if you see somebody in need, freaking help them. No matter what the issue is. And that's what I encourage. Because trust me, if you put someone down to the point to where you're trying to belittle them, you may regret the outcome of what happens.
Y'all, I love y'all. I really do. God bless y'all. Let's bring this one home. And by the way, <laughs> Project Cars 2 is kick-ass. It's the closest thing that anybody will get to iRacing for consoles. And it is really, really fun. But to get it on a good online race, y'all are going to have to wake up super duper early. Or be able to play around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time because this game is based out of England and there's a lot more Englishmen and Britishmen and Irishmen and basically just everybody over there on that side of the lake on this than there are a lot of Americans I've met a lot of Americans on here but they don't play it as competitively and one of the big quotes religiously as I or any of these other per people do and you know I'm using a controller and you can even get this thing synced up with a controller and there's videos on how to do it I've watched three of them and I've got it synced up to how I like it by using all three of those videos where just by flicking gets me a turn holding it down does this and then my gas barely hit it. I'm keeping it at 15. And there you go. Downshift is L1. Upshift is R1. Break. My clutch is X. <coughs> Excuse me. But alrighty, yo. This is where I'm going to turn in. Y'all have a good one. This is Mav signing off. Not for the last time. But maybe for some time. See y'all next time.